Hello, in this video we look at distribution of quadratic forms and I'm suggesting for background that you look at a, a video I called item potent matrices. I call it BV1 which is background video one and in here we're going to do this incrementally so there's probably going to be three or four videos on the distribution of quadratic forms and in each time we're going to get a little more complicated so this first theorem is going to be that x is multivariate normal uh, zero vector and i so all the components of this are independent and then in the next video we're going to assume that the cover that there's a positive definite covariance and then in the next video, we're going to assume that it's zero in, in a semi-definite covariance. And then in the next video, we're going to assume that there's a mean vector and an I, so all the components are independent. And then we're going to assume there's correlation, and then and, and we're just going to build that way. But I think what is so fascinating here is latter theorems use previous theorems to prove it. And you'll see what I'm talking about here. We proved two theorems in this video just to keep it a, a nice length. Um, so we're going to let x be a k by 1 vector. And now I always get critique that I don't have like a little vector sign or they're not bold. Or I just think it makes my paper clutter, more cluttery, if that's a word. And um, I'm going to leave them off when I don't think there's any ambiguity. So x is a multivariate normal zero i, and a is a k by k symmetric idempotent matrix with rank r, and then this uh, quadratic form is chi squared r. So now a couple things here. I see idempotent, and I know that the rank of a means the trace of a. So if we add the diagonal elements of a, it's going to be r, and that's that's from the idempotent uh, thing. Also, idempotent matrices have eigenvalues that are 0, 1. Anyway, there's so many properties, and that video uh, covers a lot of it. So here, let's go into the proof. Since A is symmetric and idempotent, then it can be decomposed into A equal P, D, P prime, where P is an orthogonal matrix and D is a diagonal, with R1s down the diagonal and zeros elsewhere down the diagonal. And I'm going to point you to theorem three in, in background video one. So let's let z equal p prime x. Then z is multivariate normal zero i. So and here's here's the reason. Uh, z is a linear combination of normal random variables. So it's a self is a normal random variable, and the mean is zero. And the variance of z is, you know, you take the p prime out front and you transpose it out back, and then you take the variance of x, which is i. But these are orthonormal uh, matrices, so this product is i. Okay, so now what just happened is so important that note using the first r components of z, uh, the sum of the components squared is chi squared r, right? Because each one of these components is a zero, uh, normal zero one random variable, and so if you square a zero one random normal zero one random variable, it's a chi squared with one degree of freedom, and each of these components are independent. So each one of these chi squared one degrees of freedom sum the first you know the first r components, then it's chi squared r. Okay, well now let's look at x prime a x and then we'll put in our uh, spectral decomposition for a but th these two pieces on the end are what we were calling z but remember z is a diagonal matrix with ones down the first r diagonals and zeros elsewhere so when you multiply this out you get this but we just said that was a chi squared uh, distribution with r degrees of freedom and that's what we wanted to prove so now to theorem two we let x be a vector a k by one vector and it's multivariate normal zero and sigma where sigma is a positive definite matrix okay so let's let a be a symmetric k by k matrix if a sigma is idempotent and has rank r 
then uh, this quadratic form is, is chi-squared with r degrees of freedom, central chi-squared with r degrees of freedom. So this is the next step. So the goal here is we're going to trick this into where we can use theorem 1. Okay? So somehow we'll use theorem 1, and it's so creative how it's done. So if sigma is a positive definite matrix, we can write it as r, r prime, maybe using Chalatsky's decomposition or some other algorithm where R is non-singular, meaning it has an inverse matrix. So let's, let's let A star be A or R prime, you know, transpose A R. And then um, A star is symmetric because A is symmetric, right? So if we take the transpose of this and distribute it, we get it back. And A star is idempotent. So let's look at that. And here's why. So A star times A star, we put in its uh, spectral decomp. Now, R, R prime is what sigma was. So we put that there. Now we're going to put the identity matrix in here so it doesn't change it. But we're going to use sigma, sigma inverse. That's the identity matrix, right? But then A sigma was one of the assumptions that it's idempotent. So A sigma, A sigma, we get A sigma back. But then sigma, sigma inverse the identity matrix. So then we get R prime A R, which is A star. So A star is idempotent. Now since A star is idempotent, or A, I don't know why I have double star there. Since A star and uh, A sigma are idempotent, we know that the rank is equal to the trace in both of these cases, okay? And I'm gonna say C theorem seven in BV1, background video one. So now using that knowledge, we know the rank of A is the trace of, or the rank of A star is the trace of A star, which is this. Now the trace, you can rearrange matrices, and so we do that. But R, R prime is sigma, but A sigma is an idempotent matrix, so the trace is the rank, and we know that is R. That's one of the assumptions, that the rank is R. Okay? So let's let Z be R inverse X. Then Z is multivariate normal zero I. Okay? And, and how do we know? Well, X is multivariate normal, so Z is a linear combination of, of normal random variables. And since the expected value of Z is zero, and the variance of Z is, you, you know, you take out R inverse and then you transpose it out back. And then the uh, variance of X was sigma, but sigma was R, R prime. And then so the, the this is an, or inverses of each other, that's I, this is I, I times I is I, okay? So now we're, we're, in, we're in theorem one. So by theorem one, Z, A star, is chi-squared with R degrees of freedom, right? So the Zs are multivariate normal, which is part of the assumption, multivariate zero I, one of the assumptions, and A star was symmetric and idempotent, which it is. So then by theorem one, this is chi-squared with R degrees of freedom, okay? So let's look at this quadratic in more detail. Now let's put in what we know about each of those pieces. Z was R inverse X. A star was A, A transpose A R. Um, let's distribute this transpose and we're here. Now we have R transpose inverse times R transpose. That's the identity. R, R inverse, that's the identity. And we get X prime A X. And we just said that was kite squared with our degrees of freedom. And that's what we wanted to set out and prove. Well, that's all I have for this video. We're going to keep going with uh, distributions of quadratic forms in the next two or three videos. Um, if you liked it, subscribe and, and uh, see you next video.